Welcome. In this session in Linear Data Analysis, we'll explore how we can represent a matrix as a set of column vectors. Part of the motivation for this is what would Einstein do? When I read Einstein's 1918 paper on general relativity, I realized that he was writing before we understood that a matrix was an object in itself. And Einstein had to deal with them as a set of entries. So when we start exploring his paper, what we see is, for example, he represents the metric tensor in this way. And this is not how we would represent it nowadays. We would have square brackets, and they would be on both sides. Here he has a curly bracket, and it's only on one side. And Einstein's summation convention for how to multiply a matrix and a vector is still used in parts of physics and differential geometry. We won't use it because we have a better notation, but when Einstein was writing his paper, the notation that we use for matrices and vectors had just barely been invented, and Einstein had to reinvent parts of linear algebra to explore and explain to us how space-time curvature works. So we won't go through that. Instead, what we'll do is we'll deal with a matrix and a vector in ways that are conventional that you can read of in texts. Let's begin by Let's consider a, a simple 2 by 2 matrix. And the way that we'll write this is we'll write this as a matrix A. And our notation throughout the course will be, we'll say that A has entries that are real numbers. And then we'll indicate in a superscript the size. So it will have two rows it will have two columns. And let's consider a vector that has two entries. And we'll say that this is a vector, for example, C. And it also has all real numbers. And it has two entries. We could write and let's all suppose, suppose that we have another vector, w, that is also all real numbers, and there are two entries. We could write c equals a times w. This is a formula that we'll go through quite often in the first module of the course. We could say that that's equivalent to saying, let's write it by entry, c1, c2, equals... And then A would be A11, A21, A12, A22. And then W would be written as W1, W2. And what we can do is we could multiply this through, and that would, this vector, would then equal. And the way that most of us were taught to do matrix vector multiplication is to treat the matrix as having a row. And we would say that this is A11 times W1 plus A12 times W2. And then the second entry would be A21 times W1 plus A22 times W2. And we could equally well put these w's at the start, because the multiplication of two real numbers is commutative, meaning we can switch them. So that would also be equal. We could write it as w1 times a11, w1 times a21, plus w2 a12, w2, a22. And by doing it in that order, what we're doing is we're drawing our attention to the fact that this is the same as saying that this is, now I can factor that w1 out. And I can say that's w1 times a11, a21 plus, and I can factor this out and make that W2 times A21, A22. And so I can write this as W1 
times, and I could say I could take the data in this vector, and I could look at this first column as being a vector itself. And then likewise, I can take the second column of this vector, and I can treat that as a vector A2, and I can say that that's multiplied by W2. So I can represent this vector C as I could go all the way down to the entries, or I could say that it's a one entry times a vector of entries, or I could treat it as a linear combination of vectors. Another way that we can do this is a very important concept in matrices. We'll go through this in a subsequent session, but we can we can partition this into blocks. A partition is dividing a set into distinct uh, non-empty subsets where the union of all of them is your original set. And the way that we can treat this problem is we could rewrite that as being equivalent to, now I could write that as C1, C2 equals, here what I could do is I could partition this matrix into pieces, and I can say that this piece is a vector, and this piece is a vector. And so I could write that as A1 vector and A2 vector. And this is a critically important concept for us, because this, when we partition a matrix or a vector into blocks, it means that we can treat those blocks as objects. And this was an important concept that came well after Einstein introduced us to this notion of treating matrices as, um, as uh, objects. So, so now, let's try solving this problem. The way that we do it is we do the same thing. Over here, we multiplied a real number by a real number plus a real number by a real number. Here, we could multiply a real number and a vector. And that would just directly equal, that would be this vector times this. So that would be A1, W1. And then this vector times this real number. So that's A2, W2. And it really doesn't matter whether I post-multiply or pre-multiply by the real number. And that means that that is the same as W1, A1 plus W2, A2. And so what I can do is I can start to treat a matrix as being an ordered set of columns, and each column is itself a vector. And when I do that, what it does is it, part it starts to partition a matrix vertically. So I can imagine now that in, in a higher dimension, what I have is I still have the same idea that a vector C is a matrix times another vector. But that could be, now this one might have, for example, this might be a very long A1 vector. It might be tall and, of course, only one element wide. And then A2 might also have that, and so on. And I might have a total of n of these, uh, of these columns. And then I would multiply it. So now the number of entries in the w vector has to equal the number of columns in A, otherwise the matrix multiplication doesn't work, and that would be w1, w2, and so on, until we have all of the numbers needed to perform it. And then what I would do is I would say this vector C can be represented as w1 times a1. plus, then take W2 times A2, and so on until we have completed the linear combination, and now we have a different representation
for this vector c. And we'll go through, um, in our first module of this course, we'll go through a number of ways that we can arrive at this linear combination of um, uh, the vectors that are the columns of a data matrix. This matrix vector algebra has corresponding geometry. We can thank the great French philosopher and mathematician René Descartes for the observation that many problems in geometry have a corresponding problem in algebra and vice versa. So in two dimensions, we can think of the columns of the matrix as vectors. And what we can do is we can imagine that we take the first column and we multiply it by the first weight and what we get is a vector that starts at the origin and goes to some point in the plane. Likewise, we take the second column and that's a vector and when we multiply it by the second weight w2 we get a presumably distinct vector. And when we add those vectors together what we get is the vector c. So in the plane we can represent c as a vector and we can also represent it as the sum of two other vectors. This also extends to three dimensions. So in three dimensions what we have is a similar situation. Here we have a weight 1 times a first column of the matrix and then we have weight 2 times the second column of the matrix and we have weight 3 times the third column of the matrix. And what we can then do is we can just take a step from the tip of this vector in the direction, for example, of this, and these are not parallel on the plane because these were actually composed in three dimensions, and then we add the third weighted vector, and that is the vector c that we want to represent. Now, when we get into four dimensions and higher, my ability to draw is just terrible, and I can't draw in four dimensions. Indeed, I can so barely draw in three dimensions that I decided to use a PowerPoint presentation to do this. So we'll go through mainly the algebra because that's how a computer would actually do the work, but often we'll refer to these two-dimensional drawings so that we can have some concept, a visual concept, to go along with the algebra as we work through linear data analysis.